Hello everyone, this is part 2 of 3458A rebuild and here we will look at A3, A2D board and their installed front panel terminals. In previous video, A6 and A4 boards were fixed and meter power up was completed. Now it's time to look at A3 board which will be used in this instrument. I have a few bad A3 boards with faulty U180 hybrid, uh, which is a, actually a common issue for these old uh, 3458As, especially from HP era. You can also see front terminals missing on the front panel, so we will take care of that. And this is the board uh, I used uh, in the meter for the quick tests, uh, but we will be using different board that uh, I'll show in a minute. Sadly, manufacturers today don't support components repairs anymore, so typically this faulty A3 means the complete board replacement, and that costs uh, multiple thousands of dollars. Maybe in future we will win more rights for repairs, but for now it's not cheap to fix uh, instruments like this 3458A. Currently installed board drifts uh, by about 1 ppm per hour, so we will try a different board instead that is uh, sitting on my bench. And here you can see all the plastic components uh, removed of the board, like connectors and uh, optical uh, receiver and transmitter. This was done beforehand, uh, so I could uh, uh, cook this board a little bit. Uh, usually this is not what uh, I would recommend uh, for any electronics uh, assembly repairs, but since this board was uh, also drifty, um, I figured uh, it wouldn't hurt to uh, try it out and see what happens. In worst case, I'll just have a board that is still broken and wasted a few hours of time uh, doing this exercise. Uh, removed parts uh, also mean that uh, all the solder pads uh, and uh, pads on the PCB need to be cleaned, so these connectors and parts will need to go back into the board, and I'm showing here a uh, whole process from start to finish. You can see quite a lot of uh, excessive uh, solder on the pins, so all that need to go. We will also need to take care of those poor capacitors that you can see on the video right now. Because of high temperature during baking, all 10 ohm capacitors on board also got damaged, so they will need to be replaced. I didn't quite expect that insert uh, on cap body would desolder and dislodge, so this was an oversight on my uh, section. So we will replace all of them uh, with same HP 10 ohm capacitors from another dead donor A3 board that I have around. And also here is the close-up uh, on the other caps and as well as uh, footprint uh, for uh, input connector between A1 and A3 board. So all those pads uh, and excessive solder will have to be removed. And you can see the ceramic chip uh, on the left, that's the U180 that caused uh, most of the old HP boards uh, to fail prematurely. Here is the back side of the board. Uh, you can see some uh, flux uh, residue uh, left over from original soldering. So obviously all this uh, need to be cleaned up. Well, let's get started. And here is the overall setup, so the donor board where we will steal capacitors is on the left and uh, our uh, patient board is on the right. So uh, I will use uh, just normal soldering iron, some uh, copper uh, wick and uh, plenty of flux and some cleaning supplies. Uh, so this uh, operation took about an uh, hour uh, and a half, but the uh, sections of this video is actually faster than real time uh, to save some time. Here I am using solder and wick just to take as much solder from pads as possible. Once uh, all pads have open hole, I'd be able to reinstall removed components and solder them back in place. Also, we will need to remove 10 ohm caps, 
uh, to make that job easier, I cut uh, one of the pins from the capacitor and then just uh, heat it up uh, from the top side uh, to remove the capacitor from the board altogether. This is one of the benefits of uh, through-hole component boards, that you can access uh, solder and pad either from the top or from the bottom. This technique also helps uh, with uh, this HP board, because uh, during assembly they bent uh, all the through-hole uh, component pins uh, on the back side, so they would not uh, lift uh, out of the board during the uh, wave soldering, uh, which they use in manufacturing uh, floor. I use toothpick method to ensure a clear hole in pads. It's very simple idea. Heat up the pad, then push tip of wooden toothpick straight down, pushing any excessive solder out. Rinse and repeat for each pad and pin, and you get uh, the job half done. And in between, if there is still too much solder, I would use a copper wick to remove the excess. And this is exactly what is shown in this section of the video. Not to bore you too much, all this is speed up 7.5 times to real time. So hit pause if you see something particularly interesting on this work. But it's essentially the same process, repeat all over again. Probably a quicker uh, method uh, to deal with uh, this is to use the desoldering gun uh, with a, a vacuum pump. So that is also one of the options, but somehow I prefer uh, the manual method. It probably works as a good uh, therapy uh, for the people who like soldering, so maybe that's what it is. And for anyone uh, working with the soldering equipment and reworking uh, PCBs, uh, keep in mind that uh, all these fumes uh, from flux and solder are quite toxic, so it's a great idea to use a good uh, fume uh, hood and uh, fume extractor to get all the smoke away from uh, you. And I also clean the board pads uh, in between, so like there is no uh, too much uh, flux around. And also the shop towels uh, that you can get in a Home Depot or similar places, uh, at least in US. They work great and don't leave uh, much of the residue on the board, and that is hard to clean after. And on some stubborn pins uh, it's possible to add some extra flux. So uh, you get a very well a thermal contact uh, between the soldering iron and uh, PCB pad. When cleaning the board, I don't uh, actually uh, try to clean the whole area, but rather uh, the spots uh, right next to the pins. This is done to prevent spreading the flux residue all over the boards, especially if you're working on the boards that uh, could be sensitive for leakage or high resistance uh, circuit. This A3 board is kind of a lost cause, so I don't wear actually gloves and don't do any super special precautions uh, for this case. But if you are working on something important and don't want to troubleshoot uh, contamination issues, uh, then it would be a good idea uh, to wear gloves and make sure you're working in a clean environment. Once we're done with the PCB, uh, then we can move on and clean up uh, extra solder from connectors. So here I'm doing one of those uh, uh, 254 millimeter pitch uh, pin headers that are designed to interface between the power supply and uh, A1 board. So I'm just uh, doing uh, cleaning with the same method using the copper wick uh, to remove the extra solder and some uh, last uh, but not least uh, tantalum capacitors that we will need to remove. So here I'm uh, heating up the remaining pad and just moving the cap out. It's pretty easy. And because uh, tantalum capacitors are polar devices, it's important to remember the polarity 
or at least use the uh, marker on the PCB seal screen uh, to ensure correct orientation. Otherwise, uh, it would be a pretty big disaster uh, since uh, 10 ton capacitors cannot tolerate uh, reverse polarity. And just before we are ready to install our parts, make sure all the pads are clean, especially from the front side, because we will not have access to the front uh, surface of the PCB once the component is installed back in place. So for this I just use 99% uh, uh, isopropyl alcohol, uh, nothing very special. This PCB is not uh, high impedance uh, sensitive, so it's not that critical, but I still uh, prefer to make it uh, reasonably clean. Also not to forget prepare all the pins on transmitter and receiver uh, optocouplers. So that's what I'm uh, doing in this section. Uh, same method, same procedure. So a little bit of history on this board that I'm working on. Uh, it was uh, tested uh, before in another 3458A, about a year or so ago. This board came uh, from a faulty meter before and it was uh, tested uh, with the result of drift around half a ppm per hour. So even if uh, you are using uh, ACAL, it would be pretty much useless uh, since the instrument with this uh, A2D would not be able to meet even 24 hour transfer specifications. Also uh, bad U180 uh, A2D hybrid chip uh, would mean that linearity of this instrument would be pretty bad and that would essentially defeat the whole point of having 3458A, which is famous for uh, ultra-linear uh, A2D response. This board was laying around in the lab since then and waiting for today's moment. And moment has come with a super secret baking procedure to see if that helps in any shape or form on behavior of this uh, drifty PCB. It was cooked for a good 45 minutes at temperatures as high as uh, 230 degrees and uh, that is uh, Celsius, not uh, freedom units. Again, I would not recommend doing this uh, for any electronics assembly. Stressing components with heat does not make broken stuff less broken. And I am still quite skeptical that this would actually help uh, this uh, circuit board in the end, so consider this strictly as a fun and educational purpose only. Now back to the video. Uh, there was one pin got uh, to pushed out of the uh, connector, so I had to solder it uh, back and get it uh, in place. And then uh, solder back all the optical components, as well as uh, start putting back the tantalum capacitors. Procedure to desolder the capacitor is pretty much the same as before. Just uh, desolder one pin first, then with the soldering iron and a tweezer, uh, remove the second and free the cap. And then I place the capacitor back uh, on our test board. Uh, so the rest is uh, pretty much straightforward. Just replace about, uh, I, don't, I don't remember exactly, seven or eight caps. And again, I would uh, like to stress the uh, importance of correct polarity orientation for 10 ton capacitors. Uh, you don't want to power on the board with the reverse biased uh, 10 ton caps. Here I have uh, nearly done all the caps. And uh, exactly as I was saying, one of the capacitors was in their own orientation. And of course I didn't forget about that capacitor right in, in the center, next to our U180 uh, hybrid chip. So this is what I'm doing right now, placing back the good capacitor in, and uh, soldering it in place. And after we're done with uh, all the soldering and installing the parts, we can uh, do a final run with uh, cleaning up some excessive flux uh, around the pins. 
So I scrap the biggest uh, particles uh, carefully with the tweezer and then just use a paper towel with isopropyl alcohol uh, to clean up the rest. So this is a straightforward uh, process, just take some time. And then whatever is uh, uh, paper left uh, on the board, uh, I remove with a uh, brush. Again, this video was speed up uh, just to make it uh, a little bit less boring. And now that we are ready, we can put the board into instrument and test if it still works. For this, I will use a different 3458A that have everything uh, inside working. So we don't have to wonder if uh, any other faults would uh, prevent uh, testing this A3 board. So this is all the HP 3458A unit and I already had the board installed, so power on. We have the usual power on test and we have some error here. Uh, but I'm sure it's just a calibration error, yep. And so it's calibration as scale required because this meter was never calibrated or adjusted. So we can do the full self-test uh, by executing with uh, blue shift and uh, reset button. So it takes about uh, 70 seconds or so to complete the full test. And uh, if the board would not be functional at all, it would fail uh, right away. But here we have mostly working, so hopefully everything good. Now the passing uh, self-test does not mean the board is not drifty or have uh, some smaller issues. It just means that uh, whatever uh, wide margins uh, for the basic functionality test are met or not. So uh, this is not uh, meaning that the instrument is fully 100% working. So we have self-test pass, a uh, good start, and then we can uh, test uh, with the voltage applied to the instrument and see what's going on. For that I use 5720, so we can configure it to say 10 volts and enable uh, output and then we should uh, measure around 10 volts. So this is what we got on the meter. It looks fairly good and now we can execute ACAL DCV. So this would uh, adjust uh, A3 board uh, actually adjust all the constants to match this A3 board because it's different uh, to one originally in this meter and uh, we should get a voltage closer to 10 volts because we didn't change uh, A9 reference and uh, just to make sure uh, I have the same uh, voltage connected to my reference uh, 3458A which indeed uh, shows 10 volt. So during the ACAL procedure, instrument would uh, test all the function and ranges and uh, using the known voltage from A9 reference uh, written down in constant uh, Cal uh, to 1, it would uh, use that voltage to calculate all the new gains and ratios and that would uh, automatically uh, adjust uh, all the readings uh, to meet the requirements and specifications of 3458A. That is given that all the transfers and linearity of A3 board is uh, good. So that is actually a question that we, we're going to test uh, in this uh, A3 board after this uh, baking and reassembly procedure. I've selected only to run ACL DCV, so it would not adjust uh, resistance or AC uh, function. So it takes about 150 seconds. And here we have uh, almost uh, exactly 10 volts. It's pretty close to what expected, given that we have uh, unknown A3 installed with uh, supposedly still drifty uh, but baked uh, U180 uh, assembly. So let's test different NPLCs. So fast NPLC usually work even on bad boards, but the slower NPLCs like NPLC 10 and slower. Long NPLC settings would be more difficult for bad A3 board to run and often cause more frequent errors. Typical symptom for bad A3180 chip is error 114 
uh, which usually means balanced rundown convergence error or a multi-slope rundown convergence errors. If you see those, uh, then it's 95% uh, certainty that U180 chip on A3 board is bad. And this meter is quite fun because uh, you can see uh, call constant uh, 72 quite low, but that is because the reference inside of it is not LTZ1000 but ADR1000. And ADR1000 have a uh, lower voltage, so this is uh, uh, quite a different uh, setup compared to the standard 3458A. It still seems to be working just fine, so I will connect the GPAB bus to it and then we can run a long-term uh, stability log with the external 10 volt connected as well as monitor the calibration constants from uh, frequent ACL runs. So we can test if this a 3 board is still drifting by 0 0.5 ppm per uh, hour or if the behavior is changed. So uh, I tested GPIB interface, it's still working fine, so as expected. And now we can go back to our project 3458A and install front panel terminal block uh, for uh, interfacing uh, with external signals. We will need that uh, in future after we get uh, A1 board uh, mostly repaired uh, to test uh, what uh, else is uh, damaged or broken on it. So that would be probably a next uh, part video. So to get access uh, to connectors uh, that interface uh, front panel uh, terminal block, I will need to remove uh, a 10 board, which is that uh, smaller board on the side, right side of the instrument. It has the front uh, or rear terminal switch and uh, wires uh, connected uh, to both uh, front and rear terminals. To get access, I'll need to remove the front panel. So this is uh, actually a little bit tricky on this one because this front panel is uh, quite damaged and have one side uh, with uh, all the smashed uh, plastic bits. So I'm trying not to destroy it too much. And the front panel is uh, removed uh, by pulling uh, from the sides. And now we can uh, remove the cut cables uh, from the original A10 board. So it is held in place with uh, four Torx screws. They are actually M3 screws, which is quite interesting given the instrument was designed by American company. And now we can uh, wiggle wiggle uh, board uh, and uh, remove the excessive wires before we can uh, plug in the terminal block from another A10. All wires from terminal blocks are routed to this A10 board with collet type crimp receptacles plugged on gold plated pins. They are fit pretty tightly, so a small plier tool would be handy to use. Also, because I don't want to clean this board afterwards, I'll wear gloves uh, this time and not touch uh, pins with bare hands to avoid leakage from contamination. Because 3458A have uh, quite high impedance on uh, base and lower uh, voltage ranges, as well as uh, 1 gigaohm input resistance uh, range, uh, it is uh, quite uh, important to keep uh, all the interconnect between terminal blocks and uh, A1 DC board clean. So in this section I am just removing uh, the good terminal block from a donor A10 board to the A10 board that is already uh, belong to our instrument. Uh, so I don't have to remove the back uh, terminal block that is already installed. Wires are nicely color coded and pins are also labeled on the board. So it's pretty straightforward job. Only after I actually installed all the wires, I realized that I need to replace solidified grommet on the guard shield chassis entry. So as you can see here, it's uh, very brittle and had to be removed. Got a new rubber grommet replacement from DigiKey, so I did uh, this installation of camera. And here we have the terminal block uh, ready to be installed on the uh, front panel plastic mount.
So for this uh, we will have to remove the fuse holder and as well as uh, prepare the position for the holder uh, bracket. Big choke attached on the cable is actually don't uh, let uh, cable wire to go uh, much out uh, of the case. So it's uh, quite tricky to do even uh, off camera. So I'll try to reposition the instrument and show as much as possible. But it's uh, quite tight fit uh, in there. So I'll need to get uh, with the screwdriver on the right angle and make sure the terminal block is uh, flush uh, to the front panel plastics. Front panel plastic uh, panel does not have any metal insert, so it's just a self-tapping screw into a plastic uh, standoff right there. So you need to be careful not to over tighten it and not to apply too much uh, pressure to the block, otherwise uh, you can uh, break the uh, fragile uh, pin. So now we have everything installed and uh, it looks uh, good to go. Now everything is in place, so we can uh, reinstall the front panel plastic back uh, to the chassis and uh, reassemble uh, 8 end board back into its place. You can see this front panel is pretty busted right here, so uh, I'll have to replace it at some point, but I will postpone that until we have actually working instrument that would be worth spending uh, money and uh, time to get uh, the spare parts. When reassembling A10 back into place, make sure you don't jam uh, wires uh, under the board, like you see with that uh, gray wire running off. So I'll have to actually pull it off uh, in a second. And also all the wires on the top uh, need to go behind the standoff uh, that is right there. And now we have the uh, terminal block in place, so we can actually source uh, some signals into the board when we're ready to. And now it's time to get back uh, to data login and see in a couple of weeks uh, how our Vakit A3 is doing. For this I set up uh, automatic uh, Python script, so it's just measuring uh, samples from all of the reference 3458As and as well as our DUT 3458A with a baked board. It's marked in purple on this plot and we can see it doesn't drift horribly yet, but we will see how it goes. Thanks for watching.